The War Within is finally here, and it's time to predict what healer Sidu will have his eyes on this season. To figure that out, we're going to be ranking every healer from best to worst on a brand new Solo Shuffle tier list. Of course, the new season can mean a lot of chaos, and you don't want to be that guy using the wrong hero talents while your Solo Shuffle lobby flames you for doing zero healing. To help you out, we've been working behind the scenes for the past three months to test everything on the beta while working with the highest rated players in the game to develop brand new healing courses. You can skip all the guesswork of the early season and get immediately started with the best PvP guides for over a decade. We're even rolling out brand new updates to our revolutionary add-on which gives you everything that you would ever need to climb to Gladiator or even rank 1. Everything we offer is backed up by one simple promise, that you will gain at least 400 rating while using our service. We continue to offer this because Skillcapped has worked for over half a million players. If you want to skip the guesswork and get an exclusive early season discount, be sure to visit the links below. Let's start off with one of the best healers on our list, Resto Druid. We expect most druids to be playing with the new Keeper of the Grove hero spec, since it basically is like steroids for Grove Guardians. That's right, the playstyle centered around summoning an army of Treants is back and better than ever. Keeper of the Grove gives Resto Druids even more healing modifiers, a new AoE burst heal called Dream Surge, and now even better cooldown reduction on Incarnation, without adding much complexity to the spec. Now, if you haven't played in a while, you might notice that Adaptive Swarm has fallen off your bars. But before you freak out, we don't think this change did anything except remove a tiny amount of min-maxing. Which is definitely a good thing, since after a nerf to life bloom, the spec will play more around a double rejuvenation build, adding even more hot maintenance. On the CC side, Resto Druids are looking even better, especially with a rework to the High Winds PvP talent, which along with the Astral Influence talent gives Cyclone a 30 yard range, which has already spawned a few angry Reddit threads. The other major thing Druids have going for them is big damage of all things. After some buffs in late Dragonflight, and now with Treants automatically casting Moonfire every few seconds, Resto Druid damage is actually pretty competitive. It may not have the impact of a Preservation of Ochre pressing Tip the Scales or a Disc Priest loading up a Giga Chad Penance, but now at least Druids will be able to make more than a dent on the damage meters. Right now, the elephant in the room for Druids will be the popularity of Preservation of Ochres. Since Tip the Scales Fire Breath is now not only an AoE purge, but now gives them a mini bloodlust for the next 30 seconds, making those dragons thirstier than ever and ready to klepto all of your hots. But overall, we expect the strength of Resto Druid to resemble how it felt towards the end of Dragonflight. It's going to be a strong healer, but not oppressively strong. With great single target HPS, the ability to heal while CC'd, and with one of the best healing cooldowns for Solo Shuffle, it's definitely going to be strong strong once again. So despite the fact that Resto Druid didn't really change much going into the new expansion, we definitely think it's worthy of a high tier ranking. But now it's time to look at Preservation of Ochre, and oh boy, where do we even begin? Currently, Prez is leaning towards the Chrono Warden hero build, which is a sort of preservation augmentation hybrid. Blizzard was too preoccupied asking if they could invent a healer support hybrid, that they didn't ask if they should invent a healer support hybrid. Chrono Warden is pretty busted for a few reasons. The first being that it makes every empowered spell automatically launch up to three living flames, turning a fully charged spirit bloom into an AoE lay on hands. The second reason Chrono Warden is busted is because of Tip the Scales. You know the star power up from Mario games? That's how it feels after pressing Tip the Scales, since it now gives the Evoker a 30 second buff, increasing haste, movement speed, and even cooldown recovery by 30% trickling down over time. Evokers are using Tip the Scales Fire Breath within seconds of the game starting in order to gain huge early game momentum, and then swing games around the 2 minute mark when Tip the Scales comes back off CD. Of course, none of this cool new tech would even matter if Evoker healing sucked, but as it turns out, the spec is still able to do some of the highest possible HPS in the game, especially now after the Chrono Warden tree added a bunch of new buffs to empowered spells. And now with more healing output, Evokers are encouraged to play even more aggressive with damage, preserving their title as the most offensive healer. As the icing on the cake, Chrono Warden turns Hover into a Shimmer-like spell, instantly teleporting the Evoker forward and even granting them some damage reduction for a few seconds. So if you thought Evokers were good at the end of Dragonflight, they're even better in the War Within. It's a true jack of all trades, master of everything situation. Good healing output? Check. A bunch of CDs? Check. Big damage? Two checks. So as the healer that can quite literally do everything, Preservation has tipped the scales as the only S tier healer for Solo Shuffle. 
Moving on, we have Mistweaver Monk, who might be one of the lowest scoring healers on our list. One thing we will make immediately clear is that pure Fistweaver builds seem a bit dead for the time being in PvP, which could be a good thing depending on who you ask. Anyway, on the bright side, Mistweavers are playing one of the coolest hero builds in the game called Conduit of the Celestials, which quite literally summons every celestial god to aid you in combat. Using Tiger Palm or Vivify will summon Xuan like a bat out of hell to bite someone in the face and do some healing. Shaylun's Gift will summon Yulon from the heavens, blessing you with some sweet cooldown reduction on Cocoon. And finally, Spinning Crane Kick will bust out your bird bro, giving you mana and doing some healing. Now at this point you might be asking, how could Mistweaver possibly be bad if it literally summons celestial gods onto the arena floor? Here's the truth, Monk healing output is not the problem. In fact, it's not rare to see a monk top the meters in Arena. The problem continues to be how monks heal and how weak their cooldowns are. In order to be a good solo shuffle healer, you either need to be good at mitigating damage or have enough passive healing in order to deal with long, sometimes unavoidable CC chains. Monks are still the only healer that routinely needs to stand still to plant their feet, only to apply some super short duration hots that fall off the moment they get CC. And to make matters worse, Revival was nerfed to now only remove three magical effects from their entire party. Grapple Weapon even had its range reduced for some reason at the very same time that many other healers got even more range on some of their spells. In order to be high tier again, Mistweaver would need a combination of better passive healing and more ways to mitigate damage since raw healing output just doesn't cut it. Unfortunately, Touch of Karma seems to have backfired and Monks will be returning to the low tiers for another season. Let's move on to Holy Paladin, the spec who had the wildest balance journey on the beta. For a brief time, Holy Paladin was the healer on the beta, ready to skyrocket to S tier status. But like clockwork, Papa Blizzard stepped in to make sure that didn't happen. Anyway, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go over what's new for the spec. Holy Paladins are leaning towards the Herald of the Sun hero spec, which includes one of the coolest looking passives, which we will cover in just a second. Anyway, this loadout includes two key quality of life improvements with Dawn Light and Eternal Flame, which together give Paladins a few healing over time effects, something which should help cover the key weakness of having weaker passive healing. Herald of the Sun also adds a few RNG procs to work with that have the potential to massively buff the healing or damage done by Holy Shock. What might actually be the most interesting part of Holy Paladin is the rework to Light of the Martyr, which now sort of resembles the old Vim and Vigor from back in Legion, increasing healing done by Holy Shock while high on HP, but having a penalty of creating a necrotic strike on the Paladin themselves. We could see the healing absorb part of Light of the Martyr as something that better players will exploit, which is a bit concerning since Holy Paladins were previously a healer that Bloodthirsty Melee loved to train, and now they might be an even better swap target. At the moment, Holy Paladin is probably the healer with the least certain future, especially in solo shuffle, but it should continue to be one of the most beginner-friendly healers. At the end of the day, it's still a very reactive healer with a lot of strong instant cast options. So, to reflect the fact that Holy Paladin wasn't too impressive towards the end of the beta cycle, it will be going in the mid-tiers for now. Moving on to the first of our two priest healers, Discipline is looking quite promising. Disc is one of the few healers with two PvP viable hero specs, with Oracle looking like the best choice in solo shuffle. Oracle grants an ability called Premonition, which is four cooldowns bundled into a single ability. Sort of like the good old Blessing of Summer for Holy Paladins, since the effect changes with every press. This ability is insanely complicated, and while everyone else is scratching their heads figuring out how to use it, you can skip all the guesswork with our brand new video on the Oracle hero spec, and a lengthy cooldown rotation walkthrough. Anyway, the first press gives cooldown reduction on the next three spells, which can be used to send out a bunch of penances in a row to beef up some shields or send for damage like God intended. The second press gives a healing buff, which isn't too exciting, but it's another free cooldown so who can complain. The third press basically gives the target a mini life cocoon with a mini iron bark built straight in, which can be stacked with a power word shield to basically become a big boy life cocoon. The fourth press is where things get kind of nutty, since it will grant all three of the previous effects at one time, turning the priest into Thanos who just collected every infinity stone. And this usually will happen at the two minute mark of solo shuffle, where most healers are sweating bullets looking for a cooldown to press. 
Anyway, Oracle Priest is pretty damn good. We will talk about Void Weaver in a second, but seriously, Disc Priest is looking even better thanks to Oracle giving him a 50% damage reduction pain suppression, a higher HP threshold on Power Word Life, and some even juicier shields, which is now the part of the video that we need to remind you that Power Word Shield was massively buffed in The War Within, which is definitely a good thing since being able to mitigate damage is a huge part of being good in Solo Shuffle. So now Disc Priests not only have better shields and two charges of pain suppression with 50% damage reduction, but they have an entirely new cooldown to go with it. Of course, some of you probably have questions about the new Void Weaver Hero build too, and we will admit that it does look a bit promising, but is more optimized for 2v2 where you have more opportunities to actually deal damage. For the meantime, we think that Oracle Disc Priest is definitely a contender for one of the best healers in the early expansion. Premonition provides even more defensive coverage and healing multipliers that allow the spec to dictate tempo, which is what a true Disc Priest cares about. So as one of the strongest healers in the early expansion, Disc is cementing itself as a high tier threat in Season 1. Holy Priest is a completely different story and was actually one of the weakest healers on the beta. But before you get too sad, the spec has seen a bunch of quality of life improvements, many of which stem from the Oracle Hero Tree, which is also really good for Holy. Of course, it means gaining an entirely new healing cooldown through Premonition, which can be used to do some cool stuff, like Palm four times in a row. Palm is even better as Oracle, since it now applies Power Word Shield automatically, which even includes the benefits of Crystalline Reflection and Body and Soul if talented. But what is probably the best part of the Oracle Tree is that it means Power Word Life can now be used on targets below 50% HP, up from 35%. This is a super big deal as Holy, since it not only means bigger Mastery Hots, but it perfectly synergizes with the Desperate Times passive, offering strong instant cast healing precisely when needed. If you're wondering why Holy wasn't looking too hot on everyone's tier list a few weeks ago, the answer was simply numbers. But luckily, Prayer of Mending was buffed by an astounding 65%, which we think will definitely help their rankings. Holy is one of those healers very sensitive to numbers tuning, since healing output is quite literally all the spec has. If you don't have amazing damage mitigation or a great passive source of healing outside of Lightwell, Holy Priest is entirely dependent on big healing output, which isn't exactly reliable in high dampening solo shuffles. If you're feeling pessimistic after seeing everyone else's tier list sandbagging Holy Priest, just know that Zen himself thinks the spec has a lot of potential. So while it might seem like a hot take, we're going to actually bump Holy Priest to the B tier after the massive Palm buff. That leaves Resto Shaman as the last healer to cover for the start of the expansion. Shaman seem to be gravitating towards the Farseer hero spec, which is designed around summoning a bunch of dudes. To be a bit more respectful, these dudes are called Ancestors, and they mimic the abilities cast by the Shaman. You press a single target heal, and your Ancestors will too. If you cast any damage, so will they. Ancestors can be summoned in a few different ways. The first is by pressing Unleash Life, which is guaranteed to summon one. The second way is with RNG, where Riptide has a chance to occasionally proc an Ancestor. And it's even possible to have multiple Ancestors at at once ready to ramp up healing output. The third way to summon an Ancestor is with a fancy new ability called Ancestral Swiftness, which literally replaces NS and is on a much shorter 30 second cooldown. That's right, Resto Shamans now have NS every 30 seconds, and it now includes even more bonus healing by summoning an Ancestor. Ironically, one of the best parts about Ancestors happens when they despawn, since it will give one lucky target a pretty big shield. Anyway, the TLDR is that Resto Shaman passive healing is now even better than before. Aside from being a pretty big winner on the hero talent side, Shaman's got a pretty big rework to their other trees. This included making the existing Seasoned Winds PvP talent into a baseline passive on the Shaman tree, and even an entirely new defensive cooldown called Stone Bulwark Totem, which offers a pretty big absorb shield and helps cover some defensive weaknesses. One of the main reasons we're optimistic about Resto Shaman going into Season 1 is that we are projecting a bit of a caster meta, with Frost Mages being an especially dominant spec. This gives value to the new Elemental Resistance talent, which offers a modest damage reduction on Frost spells across the entire party. Although 6% might not seem like much, Shamans are already an incredibly good healer into casters, and this new tech will help them in a wizard meta. So with a great hero build and as a soft counter to the caster meta, Resto Shaman will be our final healer going in the high tiers. Are you excited about the War Within? We definitely are, because we've spent the last three months on the beta. 
working side by side with the best players in the game to craft brand new healing courses for the War Within, allowing you to skip the entire learning process while everyone else is lagging behind. We've even leveled up our revolutionary add-on with brand new updates for the War Within, which can set up your UI in a matter of seconds. So to get started with everything you need in the new expansion, be sure to check out the exclusive offer below and learn how you can gain 400 rating risk-free. For now, that wraps it up for this one. Good luck in the War Within. See you soon.